Um, hello? Hello, hello? Uh, if you're hearing this, you probably think this franchise has gotten a bit out of hand. I mean, if I had to read over 30 books, brighten up teaser images, and read the source code of a website to figure all this stuff out, and still not know what's going on, I'd lose my mind too. These are video games after all, so let's approach it from there. And see what a timeline of Five Nights at Freddy's would look like using only the games. Hey, how it be word do? My name is Salsa Radio, and as a FNAF fan, I've had one question on my mind as of late. How did we get here? I mean, robot children? Illusion discs? The nightmares are real, but they aren't, but they are, but they aren't. Even the audacity of implying that Golden Freddy isn't real? To someone like me, who's grown up with FNAF and its story, you know, I keep to date with all these theories and lore, but I realize not everyone is up to date like me. Even still, that there are newcomers to this franchise that weren't around when FNAF 3 was the end. Well, actually it was 4, actually it was Sister Look at you get it. So, what would it look like if someone tried to make a FNAF timeline of all the games using only the games. Would they know about Henry and Charlotte? What about Golden Freddy's name? Who was the man behind the slaughter? So, I'm going to ask you to forget everything you know and everything you think you know about this franchise and start over with me. Hopefully with a fresh perspective we'll find something we overlooked eight years ago. God, I'm old. Or, better yet, spark new discussion. Consider this like an alternate timeline. Like we don't have enough of those already. Anyways, this all starts with... Now the first night is actually usually not that bad in any of the game- Oh no. The phone guy actually gives us a lot of information about this place and key events in its past. Including the following. Hello? Hello? Uh, I wanted to record a message for you to help you get settled in on your first night. Um, I actually worked in that office before you. I'm finishing up my last week now, as a matter of fact. He's a security guard. And so are we. This also tells us that the calls were recorded a week ago, give or take, before the game started. Things change all the time, and faster than we think, so any information he gives us could have been changed or has changed in that time period, so we can't believe everything he tells us. He continues, Uh, let's see, first there's an introductory greeting from the company that I'm supposed to read. It's kind of a legal thing, you know. Um, welcome to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, a magical place for kids and grown-ups alike. Where fantasy and fun come to life, Fazbear Entertainment is not responsible for damage to property or person. Upon discovering that damage or death has occurred, a missing person report will be filed within 90 days or as soon as property and premises have been thoroughly cleaned and bleached and the carpets have been replaced. Blah, blah, blah. Freddy's has very loose safety standards, if any at all. With this, we know that who we play as is either really desperate for cash or insane. We also know that while it's a sketchy place, it's a well-known brand. Uh, the animatronic characters here do get a bit quirky at night, but do I blame them? No. If I were forced to sing those same stupid songs for 20 years and I never got a bath, I'd probably be a bit irritable at night too. Aside from knowing how quirky Freddy may or may not be, now we know that They've been around for at least 20 years, and that they've probably never been cleaned, which explains why they look so creepy and moldy. 
Fazbear Entertainment really likes to cut corners and make a profit, huh? What else could they possibly do? Uh, if they happen to see you after hours, probably won't recognize you as a person. They'll, they'll most likely see you as a metal endoskeleton without its costume on. Now, since that's against the rules here at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, they'll probably try to forcefully stuff you inside a Freddy Fazbear suit. Um, now, that wouldn't be so bad if the suits themselves weren't filled with cross beams, wires, and animatronic devices, especially around the facial area. Oh, great. Well, the last thing that's important in this call is the mention of the Bite of 87, and that the victim of the event is still alive, at least as of current year. Since this night guard knows about the incident, that must mean it was either recent by a couple years, or it's company policy to know about it. It's like the only safety protocol in this place. Night 2 is more mechanic based, though I will point out that the place with the curtain is called Pirate's Cove, and the animatronic in there is described as to be aggressive if being watched, which is a weird thing to say because these are robots, they don't really have emotions, so why would you describe it as, you know, feeling discomfort? We know that they attack us because they see us as an endoskeleton and that's most likely because they're so old and out of date that their servos literally can't tell the difference anymore. On night 3 we learned that by now most people would quit or disappear. And I have to correct myself from before. These calls are being recorded one night in advance. So our night 1 was his night 2 and so on. That's good to know, because now we know for a fact that any information he has can be used since we're in the same time frame, roughly. The guard becomes less helpful with actual survival and just mumbles about his own morbid curiosity. Personally, even if I could, I wouldn't want to be in one of these suits. That just sounds like a nightmare. that know. What happened last night, and the only thing that could have happened last night, was that the animatronics attacked him and stuffed him in a suit, but the noises that they made, they were almost human. With that in mind, let's take this opportunity to talk about the news reports that sometimes appear in the place of the rules. One talks about two children that were lured into the back room by a man wearing a mascot costume on the night of June 26, and while they arrested the culprit, the kids were never found. A couple of things to note is that one, there are mascot costumes in this establishment. Two, the security guard didn't mention this, so this must be recent. And three, the kids weren't found, which can only mean that they were stuffed in the suits. Then there's one that I believe to be a follow-up to the previous report, since it states that five kids went missing in total. Same method, same culprit. I believe this is an updated report since it's less specific and they already had the culprit in custody, so it's just updating the incident with new information for the grieving parents to at least give them something. 
Another paper reported that parents were seeing blood and mucus come out of the animatronics, saying they looked like, quote, reanimated carcasses, and that the pizzeria is being threatened again to be shut down by the health department due to the foul odor. I mean, they haven't been washed for like 20 years, and now they're spewing blood. Fast bears must have guys on the inside to be able to stay in business for this long. The last one states that Freddy's is inevitably and understandably going to be shut down by the end of the year. They have been struggling to stay in business since a tragedy that took place many years ago, but recent events appear to have been too much, with the CEO trying desperately to sell off the franchise but to no luck, giving a final hopeful message to all lovers of these beloved mascots, quote, These characters will live on in the hearts of kids. These characters will live on. The phone call on this night is unsettling and distorted. There's nothing more we can gain from them at this point. Okay, let's take a quick break. If you made it this far, consider subscribing. It lets me know that you like what I'm doing and you want to see more. I'd really appreciate it. Alright, you ready? Let's recap what we know so far. We are working as a security guard. The previous security guard is leaving us recorded messages one night in advance. The animatronics are old, smelly, and have started oozing blood. Five kids have gone missing, and the culprit was caught. And due to the bite of 87 and the missing kids incident, Freddy's is being shut down at the end of this year. At the end of the night, we get our pay for $120 under the name Mike Schmidt and the text see you next week then it's over, right? Not quite. Now there's a six night that's harder and ends with another paycheck for 50 extra cents overtime. Once that's over, now there's the option for the custom night or a night seven, in which when completed, we get fired for tampering with the animatronics. While a funny little meta joke, this actually can help us put a timeline in place for the order of events. The date on the paycheck reads 11-12-XX and the overtime one reads 11-13-XX. So we know that this takes place in November. And we know that the bite of 87 was most likely the event that happened years ago that first got Freddy threatened to shut down. Now, if we believe that these five nights were Monday to Friday, with 6 and 7 being weekends, respectively, then we can know the year this game takes place in by finding Friday, November 12th, after 1987. And that year is 1993. Six years since the bite. With all that said, I think we have enough to begin our timeline. In 1987, a Freddy Fazbear's Entertainment animatronic bit off a person's frontal lobe. This put the company under fire and in danger of permanent termination. But by sheer luck or corrupt business practices, they managed to still stay in business. This event was later referred to as the Bite of 87. Six years later, in 1993, Mike Schmidt is hired as a night guard, and things start to seem off. He is informed by a former night guard that the animatronics are old and must roam around to prevent locking up. In the recorded messages, the guard states that the animatronics may stuff a person into a suit because they could mistake them for an endoskeleton. This is believed to be due to how outdated their software is. By the fourth night, Mike hears in the recorded message the last words of the previous night guard to check the back room after his shift to see if he can find him. Mike doesn't manage to, but on the morning of the following day, parents are reporting foul odor and blood oozing from the animatronics, which alerts the police, and in their investigation, they find the night guard's body. This then prompts a search of the establishment 
as there has been reports of children going missing near or around the establishment. By night five, the culprit has been arrested and there was a total of five children gone missing, presumed dead. On night six, Mike goes back to look for the kids in the suits, knowing that if the previous night guard was stuffed in one, they might be too. He wasn't able to get them all in one night, so he returns on a day that he didn't work on night seven and is caught on camera searching the animatronics and is fired for tampering with them. A few days later, Fazbear Entertainment announces that they will be going out of business at the end of the year. That's how I see the story play out in FNAF 1, using only what the game gives me. Though there is one question that's still on my mind. See, there were five missing kids, but there's only four main animatronics. So where's the fifth kid? Oh! <laughs>